Hello? Yeah, hey, it's uh, Pete calling. I just wanted to confirm that uh, this afternoon is still good. Well, what do you mean you don't remember confirming this? I'm already on my fucking way. <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. Like, what? Pete, who is it? It's Martin. Well, what's, what's Martin want? Well, he said, he said that apparently he doesn't remember confirming an appointment with us, but we're already in the fucking car. Yeah, what the fuck, Martin? Hang on, listen, I can't talk to you anymore. I'm driving, so I'll see you when I see you, but just understand that this is a real a huge inconvenience for us. The Lore Boys hat is. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lore Boys. I guess, I guess if Martin's canceling, do you want to just record a podcast then, Peter? I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> I hope that confused you for a split second where you think you accidentally answered a phone call the instant you chose to play this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're not listening on mobile, then that probably didn't make any sense yeah, to you. One can dream, though. Yeah, girl can dream. It was a Skype call. Ba-doop. Yep. Boop, boop, It's Discord, whatever those noises are. Uh, cha-ching, kapow, yeah. zing, zam. Boff. Boff, <laughs> biff, bap. Yeah. Biff, bap, boff. Yeah. Which is a lot of old Batman. Classic 60s Batman. Yeah, the, the... Where they didn't make the noises, they just showed them on the screen. Zolf. <laughs> <laughs> it's lore boys, though. We weren't alive then. Welcome back. I was not. I've never even been to the 80s. I've never been to the 60s, that's a, for sure. I'm a babby. <laughs> My name is Peter O'Donohue, the second, technically. My grandfather, Peter O'Donoghue, died in a helicopter crash somewhere in northern BC. And with me here is... Ethan Palmer. I'm very fast. He's also very fast, which he has affirmed <laughs> three times now on the show. At least thrice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thrice affirmed, very fast. <laughs> and we have Ice here because we are babysitting Jamie's apartment while he is still in Poland. Yeah, just because he leaves the country doesn't mean we're not going to use his apartment for parties and podcasts. Exactly. There are <laughs> cans... Everywhere, Everywhere. <laughs> we, we've cleared ourselves little uh, can angels to record in. Yeah, <laughs> we just got our mic set up in front of them. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Um, so uh, following the week where we did a collab with a uh, Daryl Murphy, correct? No, Daryl is his character on Stranger Lands. What the hell's his real name? Murphy. You got it. Murphy. <laughs> Sorry. Shows how much I pay attention. Yeah, uh, uh, the, from Stranger Lands. The wonderful Murphy who plays Daryl on Stranger Lands. Welcome, any new listeners. Uh, <laughs> goodbye, any listeners <laughs> that may have left yeah. due to the last episode. If you just do, yeah, just hate Stranger Lands so yeah, much. It's just it. the fucking worst. Well, I really like this show, but now they brought Stranger Lands into it? I'm not so sure. Uh, boy, hashtag boycott the lore boys. Yeah. <laughs> Lore boycott. Lore boycott. Oh, that's that's, that's, where that's it is. your hashtag, that's where kids. Go yeah. for it. <laughs> Remember to burn any Lore Boys merchandise that you have purchased. <laughs> destroy your own property <laughs> in protest. I think that's always a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yes. buy the property first and then destroy it. Yeah. So, well, duh. That'll that'll show us. You, you don't want to steal it because yeah. that's, that's a crime. That is a crime. You yeah. wouldn't want to commit a. Crime. You don't want to be a dirty crime boy. No. no. Anyway, yes. Welcome to any new listeners, and uh, thanks again to uh, Murph. For joining us, the old Murph. I can't call you Murph, right? He's Murph. not here to let me. Is know, that okay, but, Murph? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Murph, I can call you Murph, right Murph, there. Have a, have a seat, Murph. Bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's it. And then um, uh, there was some other thing I felt like I needed to mention. Um, oh, your dance recital, dude. You want everyone to come? Right. Uh, so if you check out our <laughs> if you check out our Twitter right now, the address to my recital uh, is there. Uh, <laughs> it would be great if you uh, could come, especially because my parents won't. <laughs> no, no, no. They, not since the last time. Not to, no, exactly. Got, you, you embarrassed them so bad in that dance off. I got just... very drunk for that recital, <laughs> and I dropped my partner when I was supposed to catch her, and she cracked four ribs. Yeah, two on each side, so she can't even sit up anymore. Yeah, one of them flew out and hit your dad. Yeah, well, and, I hit his drink, but and it land, just landed as bad. in landed in his drink. And <laughs> it knocked the celery out of his Caesar, oh, and, yeah. he, and then he poked himself in the eye with it. He's like, "Whose fucking rib is this?" Uh, that's what I call a bloody Caesar. Hey. <laughs> And it was, and it was. Um, if it comes back to me, I'll mention it. Um, there's four BattleTech episodes we've already done. Which you're four we've done or three we've done? Four. We did a uh, primer. We did the clan invasion. We did a primer. We did the Fedcom okay. civil war, and oh, we did the Fedcom, That's and then the we did the Blake Jihad. Yeah, I was forgetting Fedcom. Yeah, and we did the Blake Jihad. So you're gonna really want to listen to all of those already. I'm giving you right now. I'm assigning you. Four and a half hours yeah. of homework. <laughs> yeah. Just in case you stumble across this one first. Yeah. This is the fifth Battletech episode. They, they all kind of bleed into each other. 
We'll uh, I'll I'll link them all together on the blog whenever I put it up on there. So that's the loreboys.com. Yeah, the loreboys. The loreboys. Yeah, which I fucked up when I updated our Instagram bio. I was like loreboys.com, which Ooh. surprisingly is furry porn. Really? No. Oh, damn it. I no. got so excited. No, it's not. <laughs> I got so excited about the cross-brand promotions. <laughs> the URL doesn't go anywhere. It's theloreboys.com yeah. uh, where we're going to have that all up. But yeah, more Battletech. More of that good stuff. I don't know if I had mentioned my disappointment with the Battletech game that recently came out. You said it was slow, I think, the yeah. last time we recorded. Characters are fine, uh, but without voice acting, it's hard to care about them. Okay, that's fair. Um, it was like a partially crowdfunded game? Yeah, exactly. So, without voice acting, it's hard to care about the characters. I remember one name from the entire game. Her name is Dr. Farah Murad. That's but that name. is because that is the name of someone I already know in real life. Dr. Farah... Not a doctor, but Farah Murad. Okay, fair. Um, you just outed Farah Murad. She knows Peter, everybody. Whoops. Get her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all the other characters, I have no idea what their names are. And it really pissed me off that a game being made in conjunction with uh, what the, whatever the fuck his name is, like Weissman, the guy who created Battletech, yeah. he made another new apocryphal tale just like all the other video games. So it's not set during any of the cool events that you might want to geek out after. Okay. It's just like, here's a new princess. She be, she deposed. Yeah, she's, help been, her. she's been kidnapped by Bowser. Go yeah, help her. Help her. And then, and the, the fake out at the beginning is so fucking bad. F- fucking spoilers for this tutorial for Battletech. <laughs> there is an intro mission okay. where the woman is clearly still alive, talking to you, the player, saying, oh, it was you, mercenary, who helped me reclaim my throne. And then she has like a fake out death at the end of the tutorial. And then two missions in comes back and is just like, I was alive the whole time. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> you did the intro. Pulls the Scooby-Doo mask off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you bitch, you did... The intro narration talking about how I beat the game. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, who who greenlit this? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the game is... The, the, all the management is fine. I like running a space company. The combat is just absolute fucking trash. Yeah, I watched you play for a while. It looked really slow. Not, not only because, like, it's a turn-based game, but because they do, like, extensive animations for each of the things that you want to do. Which is fine. It, it's fine, but it's yeah. like... When it's already a slow game and they walk at like two miles an hour, yeah, and you just watch them as they like slowly turn around, then like aim that slowly aim their guns, then yeah. fire off three rockets on every turn. Yeah, it just gets one of the main issues is you cannot select the part you want to shoot, and the mechs have like nine hit boxes. Oh yeah, and you don't get to choose. So you can have a called shot if you have the morale high enough, but you need to get kills to get the morale. So oh, you need to geez. use a called shot to like kill a guy. It's been patched extensively in the past couple of months. I don't know if it's better. Okay. I consider my purchase a donation to the Church of Mech Warrior, <laughs> which will one day get me into heaven. Yeah, that's true. But that's I true. expect no results at present It'll get you because into the I clans fucking the hate that game. It's so bad. It'll get you into the periphery. Yeah, exactly. You get yeah, on that ship. Like, yeah, the, uh, just whatever. What's his name? Kerinsky's gonna take me out to space, yeah. and I'm gonna come back. Take it's you like, out to shape. Take you out to space. Shoot your dad, and yeah. then throw you a, a like a bone club, and say, "Go at it with your new clan." Yeah, because I'm a big, I'm a big juiced up elemental now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna come back so strong. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it for me it was an investment in the brand of BattleTech. I'm not sure if I'll ever get a return on that, but I am of course happy to have done it. Mm-hmm. Um. If you think that's okay, please go buy the game. If not, don't. It's it's not a good. It's not it's not good. Yeah, maybe see if you can find gameplay from like this patch yeah. on you on the YouTube or something. It's a pretty small download. Yeah, but I know I checked the Steam page recently just when I was doing this research, and like the reviews now are mixed. So the okay. opinion of the game has just universally when- gone down since people started buying it. Oh, it was it was thumbs up. It, it was like it was like. It was, like, overwhelmingly positive when all the fanboys bought it, yeah, and then, yeah. like, mostly positive when people started to play it, and just, like, well, it's kind of fucking boring, yeah, and then yeah. now it's mixed, which is, like, 61% positive yeah, reviews. Yeah. It's like, okay, I, you know what? I agree with these people. This game isn't... It's not good. No, it's no. not good. Anyway, you know what is good? Well, before... Yeah, the 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 newest Battletech lore boys will be very good, but before we jump into that, for the absolute mad lads who are... Still listening to this without listening to the other four. Do you? Do we want to do like a quick? Yes, please. Quick cover. Ethan, tell me what you remember about the old BattleTech. We had the first episode, of the primer. We had Alexander Kerensky, who you meant, who you mentioned, who was this leading general or, or scientist or something. Yes, he was um, the head of the Star League Defense Force, who was basically oh, Space UN. Yeah, the UN. Because yeah. uh, there's five major houses. 
Ooh, that I don't remember actually. There's five or six. Five or six major houses. Steiner, Davion, Liao, Merrick, Karita, and so five or six. <laughs> another one, to my knowledge. Uh, definitely another yeah. one. Yeah, I okay. think so. House Merrick is the oldest one. That's a Free Worlds League. They're the um, purple house. Okay. With the Falcon. Okay. Uh, they're all purple helmets. Yeah. Um, every single one of them. So, yeah. So uh, Alexander Kerensky kind of served as the head of this UN Space Force uh, until he decided, like, hey man, these houses are actually causing a lot of strife rather than fixing it. I'm gonna take all the. I'm gonna offer all the smartest people in the in the galaxy the chance to come with me outside of the the. Yeah. The local cluster and go to what's called the periphery, the yes. deep periphery. Yeah. Uh, so they went there. On the way, there was a mutiny of, of some description. Whether it was a mutiny or just Kerensky himself going a little crazy with yeah. power uh, is up for debate. Uh, he killed a couple people. It descended into chaos. They got to the periphery, and they all descended into clan warfare using these mechs, which I guess we should have mentioned in a mech warrior uh, podcast. Right, yeah. So, yeah, they all, they all pilot these mechs. Uh, they get out to the deep periphery where they devolve into clans using clan technology which is just mechs with replaceable parts yeah i mean the weapons are better as well because he take all he took all the smartest people and they continued to develop yeah shit right so leaving people behind who didn't really know how to operate factories or improve mechs means the clan tech continued to advance he took all the r&d department he took all the science boys yeah, yeah exactly um they eventually uh come back they do for uh for i mean uh a laundry list of reasons there was a another mutiny and somebody one clan leader died and in, in a in a agni kai or whatever it is um the clans come back they start destroying the houses and and the, the Kerensky's old space force yep uh until somebody says please stop for just like 15 years it was at&t remember it was, it was comstar <laughs> the communications company who was so powerful they also had their own military yeah, yeah. <laughs> called the com guards yeah so they said, just just stop, just wait for 18 years, and then we'll be good. One guy waited five years? Yeah, uh, so I believe... The Jade Falcons, was it? It was Lincoln Osis from the Smoke Jaguars. Smoke Jaguars. Who waited three years instead of 15. Three years instead of 15, 18. I think it was 15 years. Okay. Look, if I, I said 15, I, then you said 18. I don't have this completely now committed. Now you're saying 15. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say 15, yeah. I don't have this completely committed to memory. I did yeah. put a lot of it down Fif- on the recording. 15 sounds right to me, too. Yeah. Um, then... Uh, Comstar beat them back. Lincoln Osis led was working for Comstar at the, at the time. No, Lincoln Osis was a clanner. He was the head of the Smoke Jaguars. Oh who, uh, no, the guy from House Steiner Davion. Yes, uh, Victor. Victor Steiner Davion, who was like the merger of two of the the bigger houses. Correct. Uh, ended up leading the Comstar forces to victory. Uh, Comstar went full Verizon, uh, and that. The next episode, we talked about the Blake Jihad, which ties back into Comstar and the founder of Comstar. Well, we actually talked about the FedCom Civil War, which was after the clans when... Okay, I yeah. believe it was after the clans. Fuck, I, I, even my history's a little jumbled at the moment. A little, I'm getting a little, getting a little bamboozled. Maybe we should have listened to those four episodes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't have four hours to do so that. So before or after the, the clan invasion? I think it was after the clan invasion. That's the only thing that makes sense because they were using clan mechs, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it was, it was Victor Star- Steiner Davion who wasn't around whenever Kerensky left. No, he wasn't born yet. Yeah, so so let's say it was after the clan invasion. Uh, there was the FedCom Civil War, which ended in uh, Victor Steiner Davion's death. Uh, no, he... He killed uh, somebody else. Uh, he, he, well, he killed Lincoln Osis with a sword, if you remember. Oh, that's the, to, that, okay, during, that was the clan invasion. During Operation Bulldog. Yeah. And then the FedCom Civil War is because his stepsister tried to take over space. Oh, that's right. right it was right, a feder- right, federated right. commonwealth was the merged houses of Steiner and Davion. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Crazy Sister tries to take over space. Uh, he stops it. Yep. Um, then we have the Blake Jihad. Then we have the Blake Jihad, which is where the founder of uh, Comstar was deified after his death. Yeah. And uh, they devolved into like this weird cult thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Basically that. And then we pick up now, after the Blake Jihad. 10,000 Years of Darkness. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's Warhammer again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, uh, we kind of rambled through that one. I don't remember everything perfectly. Ethan has obviously got a hell of a lot a hell of a lot of that down just from the previous episodes, but I guarantee we got that mostly right mostly in our right. previous episodes. Mostly right, which is an A in Lore Boys Green. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so if, you're, if you want to hear me sound like I know what I'm saying, uh, go back and listen to those episodes, and that's the last time I will uh, assign any homework to you. Mm -hmm. Ever and forever. Yeah, exactly. Peter Promise. Yeah. 
that's a, that, that, that's a that's a Peter Pinky promise right there. Stick your pinky out, rub it against your phone. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a promise. <laughs> so now we're coming back, right? We're coming back with a familiar name, which uh, you didn't mention because I know he just kind of comes up at the end of the Blake Jihad, uh, because he is the guy with the sexy porn alias Devlin Stone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because he kind of comes out of nowhere. I, I don't. I, I said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remembered who it is, but no, I remember the sexy porn alias. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I tell. That's why I tell jokes. It's so people remember what I'm saying. That's it. Right? You remember the jokes. No one would listen to me otherwise. <laughs> you remember the goofs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, little is known about the early life of Devlin Stone. Even Comstar, of all things, has no records of his existence prior to the 3070s. Okay. So AT and T, with the military <laughs> that controls all communication in the inner sphere, has no records of this man existing he simply came out of nowhere as an adult man helped stomp the jihadis <laughs> and then like and then that and like and went from there right and went to here exactly to here um where am i uh yeah so he led the insurrection at the word of Bl- at, at a word of blake prison camp on the planet of kittery uh and this uh, this is a prison camp that he came into a contact with another important character named david lear Spelled have we like heard, King have we heard Lear. Of Lear yet? No. Okay. Uh, who is uh, the son of Kai Allard Liao of House Liao? Now, this guy, I wrote a little thing kind of in here because this guy's kind of like Forrest Gump for our Mech Warrior podcast. Kai Allard? Uh, yeah, Kai okay. Allard Liao. He was basically in and around every single event that we talked about, <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't mentioned him up to this point because I've never been. I just usually focus down on uh, the, the whatever the Karinskis or the Davions yeah, or the yeah. Steiners, right? <laughs> He's, but he's been at all. But of you these watch th- that old Nixon tape, and he's there in the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, and he tells JFK that he has to pee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the weird CGI JFK <laughs> mouth. <laughs> um, he was a Coliseum champion on Solaris Seven. Okay. For two years straight, uh, leading some people to call him the greatest mech warrior of his generation. Okay. In thirty fifty nine, uh, and this is uh, Kai Allard Liao that we're talking about. In 3059, he led the first St. Ives Lancers, which is his own private little squad, okay. uh, during Operation Bulldog, which was when they crushed Clan Smoke Jaguar. Yeah. Uh, he was in command of the liberation of a planet called Terra Zed and took part in the battles of Caripare and Schuyler, which we have not talked about and will not get into right now. Cause just battles. Just battles. Yep, just they, know that there are battles and he was there. He was in charge. Kai and, Allard. Exactly. And then after the end of the operation, he joined Victor Steiner Davion in the mop-up actions on Huntress, which was the Smoke Jaguar homeworld. Okay. Uh, and the Great Refusal on Strana Mekti, which was the clan Holy World with Kerensky's corpse in a flying coffin around the planet, okay, right? Okay, okay, okay. Orbit. Yeah, yeah. In 3060, wherein, while piloting a Stormcrow uh, battle mech, uh, he defeated clan con vlad ward of clan wolf who we did mention was him and the lady from jade falcon who were the two people in the background who were the clans wolf and jade falcon were like yeah don't worry smoke jaguar we'll totally help you lincoln osis you're not a bloodthirsty <laughs> madman and then yeah. they didn't help him then they didn't help yeah him. exactly so he defeated vlad ward of clan wolf um, but we, of course, didn't talk about him because we focused on Victor and him actually cutting off Lincoln Osis' head, head with yeah. a katana because sword beats mech. Exactly. That's where the art came from All the time. in that episode. Yes, where he's being launched he's out of... Being shot out of a mech with a, a katana in hand. <laughs> katana in hand. <laughs> exactly. Um, he assisted Victor Davion during the Fedcom Civil War. Okay. He was just around. He's there too. Yeah. yeah. And during the Jihad, this is another character who I just threw in here. During the Blake Jihad, uh, he was abducted by a shadowy character who has existed seemingly for centuries known as the Bounty Hunter. Capital T, <laughs> capital B, capital H. Uh, I do want to talk about the Bounty Hunter quickly because it's the first time I've seen their, dog. Na- their name pop up. What? It's Dog. Dog the Bounty dog Hunter? The bounty yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's got his mullet in there. Yeah. <laughs> the Bounty Hunter is fucking, just fucking awesome. Okay. So he or she, because they never speak and never take off their power armor, so nobody knows who they are, um, is speculated that it, the, the power armor is speculated that it either keeps them alive or is passed on from hunter to hunter due to the amount of time the hunter has been, had been around. Uh, originally, the hunter piloted a Griffin medium mech, Okay. Which is in the BattleTech game that we were talking about. It's okay. kind of like a humanoid shaped thing. It's got a little tubular cannon on the side of its shoulder. Tubular. It's so rad. It's got a, <laughs> it's got a surfboard. Yeah. It's, it shoots surfboards. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Surfs up, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish that there was an ability in the game that just gave the Griffin a surfboard. Yeah. <laughs> to make that game infinitely more playable. Somebody mod it. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the hunter then stole Natasha Karinsky's Marauder Marauder Heavy Mech and piloted that for Hell about yeah. something like thirty years. So this power armor fits under, like he and he or she enters the mech. In their power armor? Presumably. Correct. So okay. I'm going to get into that in a second. Uh, later, they piloted a Mad Cat and a Marauder 2. Uh, the Bounty Hunter's identity is still completely unknown, and their mechs are always modified so that they continue to wear their armor while piloting the mech. Uh, the armor looks a lot like Doom Guy, actually. I'll oh, show cool. you a picture afterwards. It's very 80s sci-fi. Loved it. I was picturing Boba Fett. Uh, no. Um, despite the fact he is the only cool-looking character in, in the Star Wars canon, Star Wars canon other yeah. than Phasma, who is equally as worthless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, he he's got. It's like a, kind of like an opaque visor over. It looks a lot like 2016 Doom Guy. Doom Guy. Yeah, okay. a lot like that. And it's also like the same kind of dumb khaki green. Cool, accepted. He's a Lego spaceman. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would have been David Lear's father, who, and so yeah, Devlin met David Lear while in a jihadi prison camp. Wait, the bounty hunter was David Lear's father? No, no, no. The bounty hunter kidnapped. David Lear's father. Oh, uh, okay. In the past, during the jihad, but okay. I only threw that in there because the bounty hunter is just—it's just fucking we, cool. We want to talk about the bounty hunter. Yeah, I just—it's like my show, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> I will put in random asides about Lego astronauts <laughs> as much as I fucking want. <laughs> yes. Uh, now we get back to Devlin and David Lear. Uh, through uh, David, Devlin met many of the leaders of the Inner Sphere and even the leaders of some of the clans. Because after the invasion, they stopped being quite so um, troublesome. That's fair, yeah. Right? After they got defeated by Comstar, After they were like, everyone okay. everyone got killed, yeah. Yeah. The uh, dead are peaceful. Yeah. Say what you want about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the dead are peaceful. <laughs> that's a good title. That's a good title for the episode. <laughs> um, so Devlin Stone prosecuted a hard-fought military campaign that culminated in the liberation of Terra in the 3080s. Uh, after the word of Blake's jihad was defeated, Stone struck a bargain with all of the great houses except House Liao. Remember this. It's also strange that he would be hanging out with a Liao's son because David Liao so is exactly in prison. And then that, that would be the one great house that doesn't really want to hang out with him. That is weird. Yeah. Um, Peter, what, what's going on? Why, why did that happen? It's because if Battletech has taught us anything, is that people just can't ever get along <laughs> ever okay ever 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 there is it's, it is you think warhammer is a bunch of fucking grimdark edgy bullshit <laughs> that's only because it's kind of written that way yeah, yeah. battletech is is almost uncomfortably accurate <laughs> about real people we're yeah. just like you know what it's gonna take us a thousand years and after multiple wars and the cult of verizon almost killing us all yeah. and we still can't agree on anything can't, can't get along <laughs> yeah. when the guy who smacks down verizon yeah, is yeah. just like yo what if we just had some peace for a while? And <laughs> and one guy at House Lee, I was like, fuck that. Fuck that. Who are you? Fuck you, man. Yeah, you I can't guess. tell me how to live my fucking life. <laughs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is all in Geneva, too. On Earth, yeah. So. Um, where was I? Yeah, except that. So that um, he wanted to cede control of some of the world's nearest Terra so that Stone could create his own nation, uh, the, Re the Republic of the Sphere. Uh, he proved that he had no problem using military force when he took the planet from Liao that they had refused to hand over. So he looked at them, he was like, give me that for peace. <laughs> He's like, and they were just like, oh yeah, fuck you, you want to fight about it? And he was like, all right. Hell yeah, I do. Hell yeah, I do. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. I love fighting for peace. <laughs> <laughs> and he wins. He does take some of the planets back from House Liao. Okay. Um, yeah, so he took them. And then in October of 3073, Stone met with Victor Steiner Davion on Tuki Eid, Our which boy. is the planet and where Tukey Comstar... Is the big one. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Comstar first beat the clans, yep. the Battle of Tuki Eid, uh, in a meeting arranged by David Lear. He was basically his agent. Oh, nice. He's just like, oh, listen... Listen, Stone, baby, <laughs> Devlin, you're going to be huge. Inner Sphere huge. You're going to be drinking wine and champagne on Tuki Eid with Steiner Davion. I'll make it happen for you, baby. I don't know, Dave. All you got to do is let me masturbate in the doorframe <laughs> for a little while. I don't know, David. The last planet you sent me to, they were really touchy and... Yeah, you know, I just I'm not so sure about it this time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I gotta go. I'm driving. Okay. <laughs> he just like hangs up his call 80s it, phone. Call that fluffer I like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get champagne. I want it delivered by a young boy. <laughs> <laughs> Producers in Hollywood. Am I right? Yeah. Guys? Right. That's a relevant joke. 
<laughs> Relevant and terrible. In space. Just like our show. Yay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Turn the show off now. Uh, at the meeting, uh, he and Lear laid out a philosophy which Victor would privately describe as militant socialism keyed to altruism. Um, and it's such a, a, a jargony bullshit yeah, sentence. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever. He just needed. He needs something to tweet out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. He needed. He, he, he needed he, to update his Twitter bio. Yeah, that's, d- that's what's written. Like. Davion was taking a shit, and he was just like, "I really got to tweet about this meeting <laughs> here on Tuki." So, uh, it, anyway, but they let him do it. Uh, officials and authorities would have their uh, assets placed in a blind trust, which is always good. So he's like, "Hey guys, listen, I understand. Fifteen hundred years ago." Socialism never worked, but we're in space now, and we have literally never had wars for stupid reasons. Have they considered well, socialism as zero G's? Let's do it again <laughs> in space this time. Take all my money, but poke your eyes at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's how blind trust works, right? Yeah, so, you get to uh, poke your banker's eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So all you need to do is stab out David Lee's ears. Yeah, that's yeah. it. David, Lear, David Lee's ears. David Lee Roth ears. David Lee Roth's <laughs> ears. ears. Cut them off. <laughs> Give them in space. Yeah. Um, they have their assets placed in a blind trust. Public service would be rewarded. Greed and corruption would be punished. And all weapons would be placed under the government's control. Uh, they mutually agreed that this approach would be most effective on worlds liberated from the Blakists, where there was a pre-existing authority, the, the pre-existing authority and structure had been completely eliminated, leaving a power vacuum. Okay. So he just was sliding into these planets' DMs, right, on their Instagrams. Yeah. Because he was like, hey, guys, do you remember those cultists that took over and then I killed them all? Yeah. I'm in charge now. I'm taking all your guns away and your mechs and your money. <laughs> So send nudes. Yeah, send, send nudes. <laughs> send nudes. Let me tell you about uh, socialism in space for a minute here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, just like at the door in a bathroom. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, right. Uh, eventually, Victor agreed to help them by encouraging his allies, uh, Peter Steiner Davion, uh, Yvonne Steiner Davion, and Hohiro Karita, among others, to flock to his banner. Okay. So he was like, okay, guys, listen. He makes a good point about socialism, how it never worked on Earth, but, but that space. we've never gotten to fights in space over anything stupid. Yeah. So we should do socialism in space. And everybody was just like, big gaps in their memory about <laughs> the 1950s yeah, yeah. on Earth before we went to space where they were just like, yeah, you're right. Also, big gaps in their memory about their own history yeah, where they, they have literally had a war yeah. about yeah. anything. <laughs> Remember that time we let uh, one company r- rule everything? Let's try... The exact opposite. Let's not try and find middle ground here. Yeah. Let's just go completely in the other direction and hope <laughs> things work out. <laughs> um, can you imagine how this goes? Uh, the, uh, Stone, however, benevolently led the Republic of the Spear as its exarch, which is the highest office, until 3130. Uh, he retired and then mysteriously disappeared soon after, promising to return again should he be needed. I'm going out for smokes. I'll be right back. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well... Uh, Finally made communism work. It, <laughs> it only took us 1,600 years. Yeah, but, uh, <sighs> I'll be back. Yeah. Well, Puts, he's still wear, was wearing socks and sandals, yeah. just like <laughs> shuffles out of the house like, Stone, you coming back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll be back. I'll be well, back. When you need me. Oh, <laughs> just, just call me. Got like the new system set up for a week. He's like, well... Guess it works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be on vacation. Call me if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it looks like just precariously balanced. Like, yeah. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you want to put that fire out? Nah. Uh, eh, it'll run out of fuel eventually. It's in space. The fire it'll put fades. itself out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Republic of the Sphere rose from the ashes of the Word of Blake Jihad. Uh, its capital is the city of Geneva on Terra. He was like, what's the most peaceful place on Earth? Disneyland doesn't exist anymore. What's the next best place? Geneva, Geneva. which still exists. They, they signed a piece of paper there once. Yeah, exactly. A long time ago, right before something else happened with communism. I don't know. We'll yeah. do that again. <laughs> uh, part of Stone's vision was to create a time of peace, and the Republic helped fulfill that vision by occupying many of the planets that the successor states had fought over for centuries. Uh, the successor states are the Great Houses, okay. so-called because they succeeded the original Star League. You remember when the UN fell apart yeah. in space? Then, then, then they showed up. And then they made the Star League 2, which also didn't work out so well. No, it didn't. Then it's never it. seemed to work for these people, honestly. Yeah, it's it's like people are shit in space. <laughs> also with tanks, though. People are shit in space. Also with tanks. Yeah. Um, Stone also acknowledged that the power came from the people, not the government, so he sought to weaken the power of the nobility. 
So okay. he's a very French he's Revolution. Very, very socialist, I mean. You're very French Revolution kind of Marxy, Trotsky mm-hmm. sort of homie. Socialist, yeah. If Trotsky vanished without a trace and was just like, I'll be back when I am most needed. That's it. If Trotsky had actually convinced everyone in the world that this would work and then fucked off the yeah, he, Aruba forever. Right, right after <laughs> yeah. it happened. Yeah. Forever. And never to be contacted again. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's just like, whatever, apparently they're like watching over the inner sphere. Like, he's just like, <laughs> I'm just going to keep an eye on Russia, and trust me, I'll be back if things get real bad. That's it. They're yeah. like, okay, Space Trotsky, <laughs> you do that. I'm the I'm the Marxist you deserve, but not the Marxist you need right now. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> fucks off. He, he fucks off with Catwoman. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the Republic of the Sphere was formally signed into being between the 7th and 15th of March in 3081. I don't know why they put those dates in there. Ides of March, I think, is the 15th. I don't know what the Ides of March is, Peter. It's when uh, Julius Caesar was stabbed to death at the Senate. It's been, a, it's happened, yeah. Like a gypsy woman said, "Beware the Ides of March," which is some particular day. And then Caesar that Shakespeare? was that sounds like Shakespeare. Caesar, yeah, exactly. Caesar was just like, "Ah, fuck you, gypsy," and then he gets stabbed to death, also by Brutus. Ha, <laughs> idiot. Yeah. God, what an idiot. And he's like, "Even you, Brutus," or whatever the line is. A two Brute. Yeah, that's it. Um, Devlin Stone was sworn in as the first exarch of the Republic. And then the Republic began to work on repairing the damage inflicted on the infrastructure of the worlds within the Republic of the Sphere and interstellar trade that uh, by the Jihad. So the Jihad, obviously, the Jihadis came in, fucked up everything. He was just like, well, we got to fix this first so we can have some trade and some communication. Uh, a key element of which was the establishment of the Republic Disaster Management Agency in 3081. So true to his socialist roots i guess <laughs> he was just like yeah yeah the power is with the people and you know what we need now uh more government yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I, you guys didn't like that last government so i got rid of them and in their place you guys are gonna get a government a brand new government yeah. don't worry about it yeah <laughs> don't worry <laughs> but a better one this time trust me trust me trust me trust me this one's really working for you guys yeah <laughs> power to the people am i right that's it i mean they do have managers that they are actually working for but they're working for you guys you yeah. know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah i'm just gonna disappear forever yeah if that's all right i gave them all guns that cool yeah, yeah. okay i'll be back we also own your guns <laughs> yeah if you forgot about that part yeah peace okay bye yeah <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye forever. Yeah. Uh, the Republic. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's so fucking stupid. Like, it, it's like such a such a fucking pipe dream. Yeah, dude. that's it. Even like, at Battletech. I, I feel like he just like had this moment where he, he like never thought that people would actually listen to him. Then he gets there and he's like, this shit is going to go so bad. I have to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. like, how did they let me do this for this long? Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, he's just, he's been bullshitting yeah, his entire way. Yeah. Like, okay. The fucking snake oil sale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, like, I was just trying to get a free a glass, a glass bottle and just pointing, at it, pointing a wand at it. Just yeah, says yeah. communism on yeah. it. It's just like... Oh, man. Standing out front... Standing, standing like, in front of, a, in, like, a wagon. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Being pulled yeah. by a mech. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of a horse. Yeah. That might be good art. Snake oil sails with a wagon. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, hitched to an Atlas mech. Just, yeah, like, yeah. being dragged <laughs> behind it. Oh, my God. Um, the Republic surprisingly lasted for 51 years until the dark age suddenly began and this is what i wanted to lead into uh the hpp the hpp hpg network the hyperpulse generators which yes. is the means of travel Inter- and communication travel yeah Inter- exactly stellar travel uh collapsed on august 7th 3132 oh shit dude 80 percent of the network completely blacked out so this is what verizon invented and ran right um yeah yeah this is yeah what, the this, HP- is the, this is their uh inter interstellar uh telephone, telephone line like if you remember those two scientists one of which wanted to be a chef and like died of food poisoning and then one guy was like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and like and then was ri- and the other guy was ri- ridiculed yeah for his entire life yeah they in, in they invented the hyperpulse generators yeah which are how they travel f- between star systems where it's like you can teleport to empty space but you still have to fly to your next planet or yeah, whatever yeah. and then comstar or verizon f- figured out how to communicate so you could actually rule out beyond there because remember they had like I, I still can't remember the treaty but there was a certain moment where star league was just like okay if you're too far away to get my emails you're you're, you're eye on your own yeah you're out <laughs> yeah. you're out of the commonwealth yeah fuck. exactly <laughs> it's just like fucking if you're not going to text back because you are too far out in space <laughs> that's it i don't i don't I, have time I for send this. a horse a week ago i haven't heard word yeah, back. it like, is frozen solid <laughs> drifting through space <laughs> <laughs> and it's not going to get to your planet <laughs> For 8,000 years. 
just it's like a mailman yeah. on a frozen <laughs> horse, on a frozen just, horse just, just like a just holding a paper letter <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> like that'd be good out of context yeah, art it. too. Just like, what's this frozen horse have to do with Battle Tech? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But yeah, that's what they had established. Yeah, and oh, fuck yeah, that was the first episode with those two guys who made the HPGs. Yeah, and like, yeah, it's so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> I want to be a chef. Gets food poisoning. Yeah. The, the, it's been a long journey. I'm kind of glad that I'm closing it out. I, yeah. I, I kind of wanted to not just be Battle Tech boy, but I, I can con- I can consider this finished. Okay. now like once we once we finish this episode so I, I can't imagine unless i'm like mad desperate but to all the battletech fi- battletech diehards out there there will be more battletech don't worry about if it. you ever want me to i mean I, this would have to be like honestly this have to be like listener feedback like if you want more battletech after this one you're gonna have to ask for it you gotta like, ask nicely you gotta kiss his ring you gotta get down on your knees and grovel in front of lord peter over yeah, here oh, i am boy. i am devlin stone exarch <laughs> of the what the fuck is it called does that make J- jamie david lear I guess so, yeah. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm Exarch of the Republic of the Sphere. Okay. A new republic. <laughs> Order. Hang on. Back from a brief cut because I kicked my mic stand. And it got <laughs> too far away from my face for me to comfortably speak into it. Um, yeah, so the Dark Age um, comes out of nowhere. Everybody is blindsided when their internet goes down and they call Videotron and they're just like, uh, just spell seat. Je peux pas télécharger mes porno. <laughs> Puis uh, je veux vraiment télécharger mes porno. And then the guy's just like, let me transfer you to a French agent. <laughs> and then that transfer didn't go anywhere because HPGs were down. Oh shit! That's how dude. they found out. Shit, dude. He was in the wrong department. All, the, like all the French uh, technicians are on another planet. And yeah. They just try and transfer it over and like throw another mailman into space. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, that's like that's their new thing. They just freeze and launch mailman into yeah, space yeah. on horseback. Well, that's it. It was like what's the, what so they can land comfortably. What the HPG was was the mailman had a little space heater. Uh, oh, space heater. I hey, that hey, was unintended. But, idiot. Uh, yeah, he has a little heater. <laughs> yeah. He's got those like those little like chemical uh, hand oh, warmers. Icy hot pads. Yeah, that you, where you open it and then it gets really warm. He had those and he was fine, but now they ran run out of those. So and they can't ship them anymore because they, they, they can't keep, travel at light speed. That's it. They just keep throwing them into space and they just keep freezing up there. And nobody's getting their mail anymore. <laughs> Yeah, so there's there, there there's like a ring around to yeah. eat of, of like frozen mailmen, frozen, the, the frozen husks of mailmen corpses. <laughs> oh God, um, humanity was suddenly thrust back into the early days of space travel, where FTL communication was not possible and messages had to be couriered by jump ships. Okay. Right? But jump ships can only go so far so fast. What I think is cool about the Battletech game, which I was complaining about earlier, is you know how in XCOM you advance time just there? Yeah. Time advances a lot in Battletech when you travel. So okay, each planet yeah. will tell you how far away it is. So you latch onto a jump ship with your space shuttle that jumps you closer to your planet, and then it's, it's still like five, six more days of space flight to actually get to Until you get your there, mission yeah. day. Yeah, exactly. A lot of cool details. Like I said, it's... It seems like a really detail-heavy detail, uh, detail heavy game, which kind of makes sense coming from the, the style of tabletop game that it was. Because, like, I've played, to bring it back to Warhammer last week, it's another, like, super rules-heavy, super, you know, like, crunchy, like, battlefield simulator, yeah. these tabletop games. And, like, there's so much little detail in there like that. So. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm... Like, I had a big old nerd boner when... I found that out in the game. Yeah. The problem is the combat. Like, I've always... I, I haven't searched for mods recently, and I know a buddy of mine actually fucking beat the game. Uh, my ex never did. And, like, her and I were... I mean, we still talk, but, like, her and I were talking about it for fucking years when oh, we yeah. found out about this game. Like, like when we were dating, after we stopped dating, all we still talked about was just, like, I can't wait for Battletech to come out. We both bought it day one. She got slightly further than I did, and I was like, yeah, so does it get less tedious? And she's like, no. It actually gets worse <laughs> because a laser always does the same amount of damage, right? Okay. Which is cool. That's why you can put a laser, like a heavy laser, on a small mech and do your forty damage. Good damage, yeah. Armor values go up. Well, that doesn't with sound heavier very good. mechs, and you can you can get upgraded versions of these weapons, but like, I'm not gonna invest that kind of fucking time. Yeah. Into that, I played that game for thirteen hours and felt like I achieved literally nothing, <laughs> and I was was not planning on I'm, I'm not planning on going back. No. no. Okay. I've got my pyre. I've got my warframe. Yeah, that's the old, it. The old, old, it's old, old in the Steam graveyard now. Oh yeah, yeah. It's sitting <laughs> in the Steam graveyard with Hollow Knight as like these things that I really should like but really don't. Well, really, really don't. Really like, don't. You yeah. know. Um, where was I? Right. This made uh, as we recall 
from our first episode. Uh, this made command and control of armed forces and the governing of the inner sphere empires very difficult, if not impossible. Because that was the problem that they had before the HPG, was I can't fight or communicate with my armies or govern or help people or do anything in any reasonable amount of time because space is too big. Space, like When you think about it, though, space is pretty big. Yeah. Uh, so despite the fact that Devil and Stone disappeared two years prior to this, stating he'd return when he was needed most, he has yet to be seen again. Okay. So, so he, humanity he, he, is thrust into a space dark age, <laughs> and the guy who was just like, when I am needed most, I shall return, still not back. Well, that, I mean, maybe there's something bigger coming. I feel like he just, like, cut up his face and disappeared. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, just like a, he's just like a fishmonger now. He stole all the copper wire from the HPG and yeah, sold it. He's, that, gonna, that's he's waiting for the value to go up. <laughs> it. it was him? Yeah, it was him all along, man. <laughs> Because it's like an intergalactic thing. Like inside the what is what is he just like in his apartment has like four trillion kilometers of copper <laughs> of wire copper bundled wire. up, <laughs> just like really tightly. He's got a really nice loft. <laughs> yeah, really nice loft. A weird amount of copper wire. Yeah. It's like in all of his Tinder pictures. He, it's so big yeah, you can't take a he photo can't with get it. Yeah, angle. Yeah. Shot. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, and, his, and he changed. He changed his name to like Devin Devin Stone. Yeah, his, <laughs> Devin Stone. <laughs> yeah, Devin Stone. <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, so that yeah, Lore Boys Cannon, Devlin Stone. <laughs> waited two, two years, two trillion yeah, kilometers yeah, of, of copper, of wire, copper <laughs> wire from the HPG. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, and he hasn't been back. So apparently, this is not as bad as it gets, as far as Devlin Stone is concerned. Assuming he's alive or existed at all, or at all, maybe yeah. he was just a beautiful dream yeah. that David Lear had when he was high on moldy prison camp bread, and he was just like, I'm telling you, Devil in Stone, he told me we're going to be space communists, it's going to be good. <laughs> Let me call my dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, buddy. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, the Blackout allowed the houses, clans, and the other powers both within and outside of the Republic to begin reclaiming or conquering the worlds that had been ceded to or had been taken by the Republic. So, you remember when he went to speak to Davion, when Devlin Stone went up to speak to Victor Davion, he was like, why don't you guys just give me all these planets close to Earth oh, yeah, so yeah, I can yeah. make the Republic of the Sphere, shit's gonna be cool. It's gonna be better. Don't I'm worry. gonna leave gonna forever. Better. And they're like, okay, no problem. Uh, the second people can't make phone calls anymore... <laughs> it, Everybody's falling apart. It, everything just falls apart. And they were just like, well... I guess we gotta go to war. Yeah, I guess everybody get out your guns. Yeah. Phone doesn't work. Get your guns. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. It's, just, it's, like, it's like right at the end of an episode of Game of Thrones on TV. Yeah. Game of it. Thrones season four million. Yeah, yeah. And it just like cuts out your thing. Like, well, I guess I'm just gonna have to kill everyone on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You got like the phone and the gun like right beside each other. All right. You got like a gun in like a glass case with like a little hammer and it says break if no service. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and that's it. So they start to just reclaim all the planets that had been given to them by the Republic. Devlin Stone's gone. I guess they remained peaceful because they were afraid of him and they didn't do anything for two years. But then, yeah, cell service gets knocked out and everybody just goes fucking crazy because <laughs> they can't tweet. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, so this was about the clans and the great houses started to take back the planets they'd given up because obviously the clans after the invasion was done some of them were more cooperative than others and okay. had like clan worlds or or and shit like that yeah yeah uh anyway before long military factions whose loyalty lay with one of the great houses or clans began to organize and take action against the republic government several republic officials uh planetary leaders and nobles and industrial giants who pledged their allegiance to the greater powers of the inner sphere or supported in some cases um, headed these factions. Okay. Uh, House Liao, which we remember was not super cool with the Republic of no. the Sphere, was obviously the first of the great houses to invade the Republic, claiming worlds like Liao, which the Confederation had, had grudgingly taken. surrendered to the Republic, used military force to claim the world. Okay, yeah. So they just went straight back to war. So after they said, we need this for peace, they gave it up, phone went down, they took it back. Yeah. Okay. By force. By force. Yeah. With gun. With gun, exactly. <laughs> uh, the other houses quickly followed suit, using the gains of their factions to make footholds deep in the Republic. Using Pro those sick gains? Yeah, sorry. Sick gains, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. I'm going to finish it by myself. Uh, proving once again that the world of the Inner Sphere is a horrible, 
it is a horrible place and people cannot get along. No, yeah, that much is clear. Uh, even at the highest levels of the Republic government, rival factions began to appear, most notably the Senate Alliance, which attempted to wrest control from the current Exarch. Uh, besieged... It was the big, big boss, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this would be the second Exarch of the okay. Republic. Uh, so uh, besieged from within and without Exarch, Jonah Levin, or Levine, uh, on October, October 1st, 3135, enacted the Fortress Republic. Which sounds pretty cool. That does um, sound pretty cool. The Fortress Republic was the name given to a plan formed by Devil and Stone. Are we tying back to Team Fortress lore now? Yes. <laughs> uh, so Devil and Stone, funnily enough, he had this plan, which was called the Fortress Republic, which was exactly what you were talking about, was just like in case of societal collapse, break <laughs> break here, we can make Fortress Republic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this was October 1st, 3135. They, uh, Jonah Levine... Uh, enacted the Fortress Republic. Uh, this was a plan formed by Devil and Stone and carried out by Jonah Levine to help preserve the Republic of the Sphere from the outside forces that threatened to destroy it. Okay. Uh, the plan called for the complete withdrawal of all remaining Republic forces to behind a border that roughly encompassed the outline of the Republic's uh, Prefecture 10. And I have no idea what this means. And it did not have a link. In brackets, though, it does have the capital prefecture containing Terra. Okay, so, so I'm guessing they're they're like um, they're like na- like neighborhoods. Yeah, so the the, the Republic it, is like gerrymandered spa- space neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the fortress the uh, the fortress Republic has Earth at the center because Earth has always been at the center of the inner sphere of the universe when you think about it. Yeah, and then when they pulled in um, the capital prefecture containing Terra, I'm not sure how far out it goes. I couldn't find that, but it's Earth at the center couple of planets around that yeah. that's it neptune got shafted oh they left that shit behind <laughs> like what do you need all that what argon for yeah like, oh, what's, it, what's it even made out of yeah. is it methane um in addition to this withdrawal any attempts at contacting the new republic would be met with hostility <laughs> no more throw mailman into space <laughs> no they were just like get the fuck out of here yeah, yeah. they would shoot all the messengers yeah, yeah. launch all the just blast all those fucking frozen mailmen out of yeah, space fro- there's like frozen mailmen like leaving the planet and they're like blasting them with lasers yeah. it's like oh no you don't <laughs> they have a lot of uh, anti-mailman cannons yeah. that just shoot angry dogs yeah. <laughs> up into space <laughs> Oh, man. Have we jumped the shark, Peter? I think so. Is this it? <laughs> we did it. Is this our best episode ever? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm having yeah. a lot of fun here. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what are we talking about again? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like, usually when we have a running gag, like a through line for the episode, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's just because we're both a little sleepy. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Jamie's not here to rein us in. Yeah, that's, so that's more likely. It's just a yeah. cascade. <laughs> it's a cascade of nonsense. Yeah. Uh, we are getting to the end here. Uh, it is a shorter episode just to kind of wrap up the Battletech saga. Or saga. saga, as it were. Um, saga. Yeah, so they were shooting angry dogs in the space at all the mailmen. <laughs> <laughs> Lord boys can't. Lord boys can't. Oh, that boy. happened. <laughs> <laughs> Battletech's so wacky. They're yeah. just like, people just can't get along because they, they keep must, launching angry dogs yeah, into space. They must, have been so much, they must have been doing so much coke in the 80s whenever they came up with this story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they just kept shooting mailmen at each other. <laughs> And obviously, in the rock, paper, scissors of mailman, <laughs> dog beats mailman. Dog beats mailman. Yeah, that's, uh, that's obvious. What, yeah. But what beats dog? Snake. It's snake. <laughs> snake. Yeah. Mailman ships snake to Antarctica whenever right. Whenever he beats snake. In a box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He boxes them up, ships them to Antarctica. And then no mailman, snakes in Antarctica. mailman bites dog. <laughs> and then snake scares dog away yeah. or bites dog. Exactly. A lot of biting. So mailman of- bites snake. What are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's it? What if the picture for BattleTech this time is just like a mailman a being snake. being chased by a dog, stuffing a snake into a box, <laughs> stuffing a snake into a box. <laughs> and just, and like just his, lower half, his lower half is frozen to a horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just says BattleTech. No context. <laughs> I mean, oh I, I can dream. I personally can dream. I don't know. But if that's I'll, what you'll choose. But. I, I don't know what I'll do. It's, it's, <laughs> there's got to be frozen mailman in there somewhere. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Why'd we do this? <laughs> Good night, everybody. Right. Although. Back on track. Back on, back on track. <laughs> decent segue. Uh, inc- the, the hostility, <laughs> which is not just angry dogs. <laughs> 
it, it also included the destruction of any ships that crossed the border into their territory. So these are the houses that are trying to cross into Republic territory. Right? Anybody. Yeah. Okay. Houses, clans, anybody, anybody who tried to come into the uh, Fortress Republic. Y'all better Kablamo. fuck up. Kablamo. Nobody's coming home. No. We'll kill you. Earth is ours now. Yeah. Okay. It, even if it's just a bunch of like... If they say don't shoot the messenger if it's a bunch and you don't punch a guy with glasses a, a bunch of mailman wearing glasses yeah. on, on a spaceship boom get him out of here get him out uh, of we'll here fucking just f- smoke him yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love the idea too that like like the phones are down so the houses are showing up at like their neighbor's place and like knocking on the door and being like hey, go- hey Jim the phones are down we're going out to the bar do you want to come he just opens the door with a shotgun just get the fuck off my porch <laughs> Gary <laughs> Gary you're not fucking welcome here get out of here yeah, it's like whoa Whoa, 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 okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. man. Okay, I'm, I'm fucking leaving. We're going to the bar, man. <laughs> hey, Jonah, cool, cool off, man. <laughs> we'll be on Mars if you need us. <laughs> All right? Cool. All right, just get, just get out of here, man. Cool down, man. Yeah. <laughs> Filthy white wife beater. Yeah, just, it. Just, just, <laughs> dog tags hanging off the end of the shotgun. Just like, what the fuck? A lantern? Yeah, tell Jeff I saw him looking over my fence, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a super short fence, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like it. knee high. He's, He's just like, like barbecuing in his own backyard. <laughs> <laughs> glances over. Like, <laughs> yeah, he glances over. He's like, get out of here! Oh, boy. Jonas here has a lot of dogs these days, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, why don't you... Uh, just skip Mr. Levine's house uh, on your paper run this morning. Yeah. He seems to be a little a- agitated. Yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, this law had the effect of sealing off the entire prefecture, abandoning, uh, abandoning the remaining Republic worlds to foreign powers. So his wife left for work, <laughs> right? Mrs. Levine left yeah, for yeah. work. He went crazy during the day because the phone stopped working, and then he changed the locks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the eight hours she was gone, he had a schizophrenic break. Yeah, stopped taking his medicine right when the phone stopped working, and he was sure that it was a ploy by his wife. Exactly. To get him, they had his brain extracted uh, by the government. Yeah, the space government. Star, yeah, exactly. Star League's coming for your brain. That's it. He, they're socialists. They don't believe in the government, right? All of a sudden, phones are down. Must be the government. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're coming for us. Um, funnily enough, uh, the fact that they sealed off the entire prefecture and abandoned the remaining Republic worlds to foreign powers, part of the Fortress Republic plan was to retake conquered Fortress land. So, okay. So they were just like, we're going to abandon these planets for now. For now. But we'll when be they back. become reoccupied, we will then... Then we'll fight over them. Fight whoever's there. You remember we had the home field advantage? Yeah, we said not to not to ju- not to capitalize on that. Yeah, we'd rather fight a ground war in Russia <laughs> yeah. in winter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. Where I like I don't get it. It's I mean obviously the collapse of the HPGs does fuck up a society as large as the inner sphere. It's like a big big panic button. Yeah, but the Republic of the Sphere took this a little far. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> they heard the raid sirens, and before seeing the checking to see if it was just a drill. Everybody fucking panicked. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> they, they were crushing each other on the stairs down, drinking trying to get out brain. the fucking building. Yeah. <laughs> this is just like a stampede of people. <laughs> um, so this is all occurring during the Dark Age. Um, although, and also during these events were less panicked people walling off their space fortresses and <laughs> shooting the mailman. Uh, Jessica Merrick from House Merrick, okay. uh, the daughter of the false... Thomas Merrick engineered the reformation of the Free Worlds League, which I mentioned was the first great house out in the inner sphere, and that's okay. the that's the purple folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not that they're purple; they're not aliens, but their house, house color, color, their is crest purple. is purple, yeah. purple and like teal or whatever. They're uh, Ravenclaw. Yeah, and Hufflepuff. Is Hufflepuff um, purple too? I don't fucking know. Yellow and checkers or something. I don't know. We're this outing ourselves as not nerds. Oh, no. This isn't a Harry Potter episode. Somebody yeah. tweeted me, Harry Potter color. Yeah, please. Tell me Hufflepuff's crest color. Yeah, I guess. Is, is it a badger? No, no. Maybe? Yes? Yes, it is a badger. Yeah. You're right. Jessica Merrick of House Merrick, <laughs> the Free Worlds League. She puts it all back together. The OG. The OG house. Uh, she also legitimized her claim to the throne of House Merrick by legacy by marrying Thaddeus Merrick, Scion. Oh, married her cousin. Yep, that's good. Scion of the line of <laughs> Alice Russet Merrick. She largely succeeded uh, in her. She largely succeeded in her reformation plan and was pronounced Captain General of the Reformed Free Worlds League on July third, thirty one thirty nine. So let me see. That was what thirty one, thirty two, seven years it took her after the collapse of the HPG network okay. after, the, after the blackout. Um, obviously, I mean we we spoiled this in the future because this is the current 
uh, Battletech setting. This marked the end of the um, tabletop pen and paper game and led into okay. the kind of hero clicks minifigure game, uh, Mech, Warrior, Mech Warrior Dark Age. Okay, cool. But there are figurines with little dials on them. Uh, my buddy Kyle has a bunch of them. Yeah, I, d- I didn't know that Hero Clicks did. Yeah, they did. They did. Well, they did Mech Warrior. Dark I didn't Age. know it was Mech Warrior. Canon. It, it was Wiz Kids did it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the that, and that's kind of where it stops because the brand for some reason has had a lot of trouble gaining any ground. Okay. Uh, all of the games. So the original Mech Warrior game that was announced that turned into Mech Warrior Online. Uh, turned into was set in like 3049. It was in like the Second Succession War, I believe. Okay. So that was still in the past. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, that was set during a canonical period and not some other fucking bullshit. Um, and also, I guess, potentially could have been a good game. MechWarrior Online's timeline is a bit wobbly. It starts in the 3040s, I believe, and goes all the way up to the clan invasion because there was like a clan mech expansion pack a couple years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've mentioned that, yeah. That game's pretty good. Again, the, the the damage threshold is way too high. It takes it's too long to weird, kill yeah. things. Yeah, it, it, it's all right. As far as free to play games go, it seems fair enough. Okay. Not like Path of Exile or Warframe fair, but like fair. Enough. Yeah. Okay. Seems good. And the, uh, I, I remember watching some videos. The MechWarrior Online community is also apparently quite positive, a lot like Warframe, where they're very yeah, helpful. I, I and, could see that. And yeah. they communicate a lot on chat. Yeah. And the way the map works in MWO is you've got, like, whatever, A to J and then 1 to 10 or whatever the fuck it is. So it's just like, yeah, I spot an assault mech at uh, whatever. It's like Battleship. At it's a, like, yeah. yeah, at A2. There's a there's an assault mech. You might A2 want... Brute. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> uh, so people do that on 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 the on the chat a lot i've played it for about 10 hours okay never got good at it i'm not really into it but um i recommend checking it out it's free so you might as well okay um and then there is a mech warrior game coming out mech warrior 5 mercenaries which is like a first person sim game like the sims yes okay yeah rad's bad yeah yeah rad's bad make him flat (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and that's coming out next year i believe Okay. Which I'm looking very forward to, um, because that is a first-person mech sim piloting game made yeah. by the people who make MWO. So your and mechs go to work. Your yeah, mechs uh, have sex. learn how to play the piano. They, can, they woohoo, it's called, in you, The Sims. You can put your mech in the pool, and it'll drown. Yeah. <laughs> you can be a complete sociopath. Yeah. Uh, but you run a mercenary company in that game, similar to what you do in the Battletech game, except it's first-person combat, so... Even if the damage thresholds on mechs are way too high, uh, it's a lot more involved, and I can't imagine being nearly as bored with that. Um, okay. Yeah, and even though we canonized the fact that maybe it was Devil and Stone that stole all the copper wire for the HPGs, uh, at present, the identity of the mastermind behind the blackout is still a mystery. Uh, the network is still not fully functional, and the Republic remained closed with no sight of the promised return of Devil and Stone. Okay, so it's either... In my mind, it's either he did it or the writers are like, something even worse is going to happen after all this. And then they're like, well, I guess we'll sell it to Heroclix and not write any more. <laughs> it seems that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the the Heroclix figurines are cool. Like I was saying, my buddy Kyle has a couple, which is neat. And like, because it's all kind of ragtag, like a lot of the newer mechs look kind of weird. Okay. Like the Mad Cat now goes up to, like the Mad Cat was like one of the originals during the clan invasion. Diamond Shark made the Mad Cat Mark II, which was slightly heavier and could uh, had uh, jump jets, so it could get a little bit of extra height. Okay. And it was more of a ballistic-based mech. It had Gauss rifles instead of lasers, was it's like its main loadout. Okay. Then there was the Mad Cat Mark III, which is in the Dark Gauge tabletop, and that's a medium mech, so it's a lighter, faster Mad Cat. And then there's the Mad Cat Mark IV, which I'll show you a picture of. Looks stupid. <laughs> okay. It look it, it looks like it looks like a wax statue of a mad cat got a little warm, went very fast for a second, and then <laughs> and then cooled off oh, because geez. it's like a mad cat, but like sloped backwards. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like wedge shaped. Okay. So it's weird. Okay. Uh, uh, like the mad cat Mark IV is like the hero clicks figurine I always wanted, but I've never found it anywhere. And when I was a kid, this was after I'd stopped playing Mage Knight, which was also by the hero clicks people. And before I had disposable income and to support idiotic hobbies. Yeah. So I never actually bought any of those figurines. Kyle has a cougar mech, though, uh, which is cool. And then a couple of industrial mechs. Because um, even, like, people were so desperate for weapons, basically. You could have, like, if your industrial mech just had a big-ass drill on it, they were, like, 
Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> we'll take them. That will do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll take it. Uh, so or that's a katana, it. maybe. Or a kat- or maybe two katanas. <laughs> there is there is one mech that's in the which we've mentioned before that's in the eighties cartoon is the the main character's mech is the axe man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just has a big fuck off axe <laughs> like, in a fist yeah. instead of like building it into that's an arm. It. They like gave it a fist and put an axe in it. Yeah. You may have laser, but I have axe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So in that rock, paper, scissors, triangle, axe beats laser. <laughs> axe beats laser. Laser beats Despite snake. The, yeah. <laughs> snake beats yeah, axe. It, snake beats axe. Yeah. We're unclear as to why, but I didn't. It, it wraps up the axe and you can't swing it. You can't right. swing it properly. It gets all wonky. You don't want to pick pick up axe with a snake yeah, on it. Yeah, you don't want to touch an axe with a snake on it. That's gross. <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> they, they're not slimy, but they look like they should be slimy. They're shiny, though. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have legs. How do they move? I don't, I don't like it. We don't like it so much we give our mech's legs. <laughs> or they're creeping us out. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's basically the current end of the Battletech timeline. Oh, uh, boy. That was a fun. Yeah. That was a fun, man. That was, oh that was that was what a, a ride. That was a goof and a half. Eh? <laughs> Hopefully you could follow that. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. A- anybody that made it through that that fucking landmine. Yeah, there was only a little bit of an interlude there. We got the history out. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So this is as far as it goes. Now into the future is thirty one thirty nine. Uh, the Dark Age tabletop game takes place during that, and no games have been set in the Dark Age as of yet. And I don't know if I mentioned it in my little ramble there about the MechWarrior 5 mercenaries that game is also set in the past like prior to the clan invasion there are no clan mechs in that game okay for some reason they keep doing that like the most popular <laughs> mech of all time is fucking mad cat and it's just like no no we're gonna no we're not gonna do why don't that we one. set it in 3039 and you need to help princess jasmine get her throne back <laughs> she dies despite being the narrator but you get this genie voiced by robin williams at least it's weird how they like digitized his voice for the battletech game. yeah it was weird yeah master <laughs> commander yeah. he never had a mech like me <laughs> i'm not gonna try and do a robin williams because i do not have the chops but i respect you yeah i did my best <laughs> uh smoking was that him yep Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Robin Williams in the mask, <laughs> which is the soundboard that you can... The soundboard is... The, the voiceover lines from the mask yeah. are now part, part of the new Battletech expansion. Hey, somebody get this mask off my face! <laughs> <laughs> that was from the movie, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, Dr. Octopus was there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that didn't make any sense. What is this? Anyway... <laughs> Ethan. Uh, Dr. Octopus was there. Spidey, you put this mask on. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like with the mask and Venom are the same. <laughs> uh, What's his name? Brock? Eddie Brock? Eddie Brock, yeah. Is the mask? Is, is the mask, yeah. Yeah. And now Tom Hardy is the mask? Yes. That movie looks bad. I think it looks okay. Yeah. I want to see Upgrade. Anyway, if I wanted to go see Venom with you, Ethan, how might I contact you? Tweet me at Ethan the Dead Man. Make sure to follow at the Lore Boys and Lore Boys Podcast, maybe. Um, Theloreboys.com. Theloreboys.com. Check out the blog. Tell your friends. Leave us a review on iTunes. Or just, you know, just email us a review. And we'll read it. And we'll love it. And we'll, we'll print just, it out on paper we'll so you can hear that it. good. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely print it. None of us has a printer as far as I know. I do. Well, I can't confirm that. Uh, so true. none of us has a printer as far as I know, which is what I said. So I can't guarantee that we'll be able to print it, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll try. I Maybe mean, I we'll do. go to Peter's and confirm it. Yeah. I mean, it's like Schrodinger's printer. Which is, it's like I, I both own and <laughs> do not at, own a yeah, printer. We're at Jamie's. You don't own a printer. We're That's, at yours. That is, you do own a printer. That is correct. Uh, Unless if you, you have some sort of weird hyper hyper galactic web that you some can, sort of hpg some sort of hpg that you can send a file to your home and have it print there without us going there which doesn't make any sense i don't fucking mind. think so <laughs> uh, um and peter where can we find you if, if you'd like to confirm whether or not i own a printer <laughs> you can ask me on twitter at pete o'donohue uh old aunt peter on instagram which is basically dead and don't even fucking bother um and then it's at lore boys podcast on instagram as well i am the artiste for the show he's the artist i do all of the silly pictures that uh the one you're looking at right now possibly if you're listening to this on wordpress of a frozen mailman being shot out of the sky by angry dogs <laughs> <laughs> it's totally... so stupid just to say <laughs> oh man battle tech everybody uh, uh and that's if... that's where you're gonna i'm the one who did it it was yeah. me it's my fault and if you're looking for uh, our third member who's not here today because he's a hardworking boy, but maybe he's listening, check him out at J A Y M I double L K 64. 64 on PSN, yeah, I believe. And, uh, yeah. James Miller underscore TLB on Instagram. And James the Miller on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and for anyone who wants to support the show financially, uh, 
We are offering uh, Lore Boys Premium. It's a service that we offer where we give you something in return for supporting the show. Kind of yeah. like a Patreon, but better. Oh, yeah. In exchange for money, we offer you goods and goods services. And services. Yeah. Uh, and this week, uh, we have a pretty exciting opportunity. We know we've been getting a lot of uh, people reaching out to us uh, recently saying they want to meet us. They want to do something with us. They want to collab with us. Put our hands, put their hands in our front pockets. Uh, yeah, so we've started a new canine training institute. Uh, we're basically just getting the little guys ready to get shot out of cannons. And we need somebody to come over and be a target for uh, when we shoot a Rottweiler at something. We'll wrap you up in sleeping bags and duct tape the joints. Don't exactly. Worry about it. Yeah, and we're you know we're looking for moving targets. That's kind of why we're doing this. We, we're not sure how to make something move on rails. We, we've seen rails. We know rails exist, but we don't know how to make we'll things move it on out. them. But we're just gonna get people instead. Yeah. So everybody that subscribes to Low Boys Premium for the low low price of thirty nine ninety nine a month. Uh, we'll get a chance to have a Rottweiler shot at them by yours truly, truly Ethan and Peter, and maybe Jamie. Yo, you'll be uh, you'll be entered into the closed beta we're having. Yeah, exactly. Of exactly. the anti mailman dog cannons. and we will be we'll, we'll, we will be opening it up eventually. We're just not sure when yet. There we're will not, be an open beta. Yeah, yeah, for the being a target for angry dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that constitutes <laughs> oh, the lower boys. Ow, ow, bow out. Ow, ow, ow. We'll bow out. <laughs>